Nottingham Forest staff arriving back on the touchline at the city ground. Clearly determined this time not to distract attention from his fine young team, whose sixth successive win last Wednesday was scarcely mentioned. Aston Villa stood between Forest and win number seven, but not for long. Amid goalmouth confusion, Steve Hodge scored after just three minutes against one of his former clubs. Forest confirmed their superiority in the second half. A stunning shot from the captain, Stuart Pearce. Villa on the way to their biggest defeat of the season and surely their poorest performance. 13 minutes from time, following a flick by Steve Chettle, Gary Parker made it 3-0. Parker scoring for the third consecutive league game. Remember Brian Laws, who had a goal unluckily ruled out for offside on the match last Sunday? Laws, from a similar position, got one which counted yesterday. It made it 4-0 to Forrest. Despite being overwhelmed by Liverpool's revival at Hillsborough last week, Sheffield Wednesday is showing signs of improvement. Hemmed in by Arsenal pressure, but led off the hook by some woeful finishing, they kept their cool. Imre Verardi's solid technique, when and where it mattered, although George Graham was critical of Lukic. Arsenal off to Bermuda for a mid-season break, stretched their lead over Norwich to six points, when Smith and Merson underlined the potency of their partnership. Smith the provider, what a cracker from Merson. His eighth in nine games. Bon voyage, chaps. Anfield, hardly the most encouraging venue for Southampton to end their poor run, but they kept Liverpool at bay until 17 minutes from time, when Steve Nicholl and Ray Houghton combined for John Aldridge to show his nose for goal. Ian Rush, the first to congratulate the scorer. And four minutes later, Rush himself was receiving the plaudits. Liverpool like to build up from wide positions, with John Barnes in the side. Rush prefers the ball played through the middle. You can see why. The recalled Bruce Grobelaar kept Southampton out at the other end. Ever had the feeling it just wasn't destined to be your day? Hans Sagers, the Wimbledon goalkeeper, got the vibes after 25 minutes yesterday when Coventry were awarded a penalty. Closer analysis shows Sagers' advance was well-timed and terribly off-putting for David Smith, who had the presence to dive theatrically for any loose style. The pen by Brian Kilkline, Sagers judged it right, but the rebound fell invitingly for the Coventry skipper. Wimbledon, who'd won their previous five league games, equalised. John Scales flinging himself bravely at the near post. Three goals in three games for Scales, a fullback. Well, David Speed is Coventry's man at the moment for the second week running, a brilliantly executed winner. So good that Bobby Gould was anxious to see it again today. There you go, Bob. Everton have never been happy on the synthetic surface at Luton. The goal down as early as the fifth minute. Concentration lost in the centre of their defence and from a fine pass by David Priest, Roy Wegerly sneaking in behind Dave Watson. Everton pointless at Kenilworth Road yet again. They say every team reflects certain characteristics of its manager. One of Bill Shankly's theories. The fact that QPR are severely afflicted by injuries at present is an ironic introduction to Trevor Francis's managerial career. Well, no arguments over that penalty. No marks for right. Full marks for Steen's ambition. But a poor kick really coming up by Simon Barker. You've got to do better than that against Shilton. Derby's winner, courtesy of a split-second piece of misjudgment by Danny Maddox. Dean Saunders away on a plate for Geraint Williams. At Ayrson Park, Paul Gascoigne's ambition just got the better of him on a return to his native northeast. Colin Cooper intercepting a pass aimed for Chris Waddle, but Cooper's own aim was very true. 1 0 to Middlesbrough, 20 minutes gone. For Spurs, Paul Stewart had gone 10 games without a goal. That barren run came to an end when David Howells helped on a Waddle corner a minute before half time. And Waddle's skill at set pieces set up a second for Stewart four minutes after the interval. Tottenham now 2 1 up. And Middlesbrough having real problems coping with Tottenham's set plays. The same combination again here with Gary Mabbott also providing a useful touch and only the post stopping a Stewart hat trick. But Terry Venable's men couldn't kill Middlesbrough off. Midway through the second half, Peter Davenport cut into the Spurs penalty area. 
Stuart Ripley rammed in the equaliser. Tottenham with only this one point from their three league games in 1989. Jim Smith's much-talked-about Midas touch at Newcastle is proving to be nothing more than fool's gold. Robert Lee opened the scoring for Charlton, and the Geordies were headed for their fourth successive league defeat. Charlton are beginning to get their act together earlier than usual. Their pint-sized front division snapping away at ankle level to great effect. Garth Brooks, again the provider. Robert Lee's second goal of the match. Garth Brooks, man of the match. Finally, it's West Ham, the cup tie specialists who are lagging behind in the league against Manchester United. And the referee ruling here that Leroy Rossini has been clipped by Steve Bruce inside the area. Now, Liam Brady had missed that penalty in the Littlewoods Cup quarter-final on Wednesday, but he didn't fail West Ham here. Manchester United welcomed back Brian Robson after missing a couple of matches following concussion. Robson allowed to run free here. Alan McKnight parrying the shot. Julian Dick slipping at the crucial moment, allowing Gordon Strachan to turn in the equaliser. And nine minutes into the second half, Robson also involved in United's crucial second goal, along with Ralph Milne and then Alvin Martin kicking the ball against Manchester United's Lee Martin. In it flies, just the sort of bad luck for a team struggling like West Ham. But just to prove it was no fluke, Alec Ferguson's men scored again five minutes later. Brian McClare given plenty of room. Although West Ham are in the 